Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me at uh, Google Hong Kong. Um, yeah, I hope today through the session, both parties can have a, a blast. And at any time, if you feel that you want to voice out or ask questions, please feel free. OK, so um, when I first got the invitation to come to Google Hong Kong, I, I, I was thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do at Google? Seriously, because <laughs> you guys are the people I go to when I look at my stuff, seriously. Um, it could be through the uh, search engine. It could be through, um, through maps. I, I like to travel a lot. I like to throw on a backpack and uh, just uh, wander off somewhere into the world and, and, and see the world. So I'm always you know, navigating through maps. And uh, lately, actually, uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I've been trying to pick up on more uh, Japanese. So I, I do this a lot now every day. Hey, Siri-san. I've been trying to pick up on more Japanese, so lately I've made a Google Translate my best friend. Right. So I've, I've even, uh, I've, I'm even forcing my, my smartphone to converse in Japanese with me because, you know, we only have 24 hours a day, so yeah. But, but I must say, you know, Sometimes the uh, translations are still a bit funky, but 80% of the time, it, it does the job very well. So thank you for you know, whoever out there that's, that's making my life a lot, a lot easier. All right. So yes, I do visit you guys very, very often every day, um, but I'm not here to talk about you know, what we can Google. I think you guys out of mo everybody knows best what we can search on the internet. But uh, maybe today we could touch on some other keywords where we cannot fully um, understand through the internet. Maybe keywords like, um, like creativity. I think, um, I think creativity for me, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing. Um, either it be through my music or my food shows or movies or my business. Because I think without creativity, we cannot really ensure our place in the, mar in the market and eventually you will be left behind in the world. Um, creativity comes in many different forms and styles, I guess. It doesn't have to be through, through movies or, or that kind of artistry. It could be through, through tennis. It could be through agriculture, architecture, woodworking, uh, lecturing, whatever it, is, it, may, it may be. It could be through programming or engineering. I think if Google was not as um, creative when they were, you know, doing the algorithms back then, it would not be what it is today. So a lot of people would say, you know, yeah, I'm not the, uh, I'm not the creative type. No, we, we all are. We just have to find that one edge. We have to find, you know, what, how we can synergize and capitalize on, that, on our own strengths. But it is getting harder and harder to be creative, I think, in this world, because every day we are, we are flooded by so much content in our phones, you know, all the blogs that we look at, all the comments, all the likes, all the streamings, all the films, everything. But unknowingly, unknowingly, we are so almost too inspired to a point where we are losing ourselves because we are taking in everybody else's ideas, their thoughts, their voices, Therefore, if we are not creative enough, we tend to what we call, uh, we would ride on other people's ideas. Let's twist, let's tweak. Let's, uh, in Guangdong Hua, we would say yi qi yun. But when we get into a habit of that, we forget about being original, being really creative, starting our own ideas. And to me, that is very, very, dangerous because if what you put out is no different than the person next to you, if what you contribute to the company is just the same as everybody else in the room, let me tell you something, next year you won't be here. The company doesn't need you. Eventually the, the market doesn't need you. And the world, they don't need you. So constantly ask yourself how you can contribute more than the person next to you. I've been in my industry for more than 22 years now. And let me tell you, 
I ask myself that question every damn day. Every day. Through music, through film, through my shows, through my business. How do I be more creative? That is very, very hard. And maybe even in some fields, it's getting harder and harder. Like in music, I would say that it is harder for me now to compose a very good piece of music than it was 15, 20 years ago because the time signatures or the uh, combinations of the notes are simply being take, taken up. It is harder to write something original now and have it not sound like that it has been written by someone sometime, like some song back then, because it, it, it's, it's been done. But in our world, that's what is happening is because all the ideas are being voiced out and we are seeing it. So if we don't voice out loud enough, clear enough, soon enough, we are actually behind. So I urge you, the, you know, the first keyword that I would want to touch on is actually creativity. Does anybody have any, anything to say? Any other things you want to talk about? Uh, another word I would say is a, a keyword for me is experience, especially, well, experience in terms of um, the verb experience, not the noun experience especially for you lot where your work requires you to sit behind a desk and a computer the whole day, maybe the whole year. Um, but I would say that it is very important to, to get out there to the world and really experience it because I think the phone still only brings you halfway and you must walk the other half. You know, nowadays when I'm chatting with a lot of the younger generation kids, what really happens a lot is, uh, and maybe the topic would be along the line of, uh, oh man, I was, in, uh, I, was, I was in Finland last week and the Aurora lights, was, they, were, they were beautiful. And then the, 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 the kid would say something like, yeah, I know, I know, I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, that, that was really cool, I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, um, sure, I'm, I'm sure it's an opening, it's an idea, it's a glimpse of, you know, what it really is. But, if that's how you see things, you don't know. <laughs> I, again, it, it's a great entrance to the world, but it's halfway. Please, when the opportunity allows, get off your butt and walk the other half, which may be even more important, okay? experience the world, okay? The, the phone is awesome, you know, the net is awesome, but that is, that is halfway, halfway. Is it too early for you guys? Because you guys look kind of stale. <laughs> James, maybe we could start with a more, more Q&A. If anybody wants, please jump in. One of the things that, that is on our minds is also giving back. Right? Right. We talk about creativity, we talk about experience. A lot of that is because we're sort of going through life through a screen and we're not interacting much. Um, here at Google, uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about what we're doing for Hong Kong, how we're supporting nonprofits, how we're we providing services for schools, training kids in coding, for example. Uh, what advice do you have for us and also for sort of the broader millennial crowd who is interested in, in doing something for Hong Kong, uh, how to get started, how to, how to think about that, and uh, what approach would you take? Thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, I think keep doing what you're doing, really. But uh, we, we, we cannot lose the... What we're trying to do is, is share, I think, this, uh, this in this era. And of course, sharing comes in different forms also. And that's what Chef Nick, the brand, is trying to do, is because I think even now, when you see families going out to, out to, out to dinners, they're actually just, you know, they're, they're eating through looking through their, their, with looking through their phones the whole time. Actually, that's losing the true essence of why we are eating together. And that's what we're trying to promote through the uh, Chef Nick show is, is what is 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 to, you know, is to actually enjoy a meal together. And that's why, that, that's what cooking has, has also taught me is, let me tell you, I was in really, really bad um, terms with my parents for the longest time. I was in, I was in boarding school ever since I was 12. And then uh, at the age of 14, I was sent to uh, Tokyo to, to, to start training in, in, in music. 
by 16, I started working, and I never really got a chance to, to have a relationship with my parents. And we've been on bad terms for the longest time until, until I started cooking. Because when you cook, it's the, the food, you don't eat it alone. You want to share it. You want to get some feedbacks. And it gave me a medium to, to know how to talk to my parents and say, wait, look up. Or, or <laughs> mom, you know, the Yi Ching Go Go, whatever you cooked back then was really cool and you want to teach me. It became, now it's, a, it, now it's a habit, you know. Does the food matter? Of course it does. But what really matters is, is how you find your, your way to share. And I think keep doing what you're doing, but if you can think of the third party, then I think uh, the, the whole picture is, is much bigger. Cool, why don't you take a seat? Okay. We'll chat a little bit and get comfortable. Um, it was a very inspiring talk hearing you talk about creativity and, and the journey where you just mentioned how cooking brought you and your family closer together. Right. Um, so a little bit on Chef Nick. Um, it's now in its fifth season. We're seeing a lot of traction both online and offline. But I want to kind of go, turn back the clock back to 2014. What, besides what you just mentioned about the parents thing, but what was the thing that made you transition from the singer, the actor setting a phone to, to Chef Nick? And what was that transition like? I, I didn't think I, um, I wasn't looking for a transition really. I, I thought I could do everything together. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm still doing music. I'm still doing films. It's, it's, it's weird because people look at this like, a, like, like I'm moving from, um, from woodworking to pharmacy. It, it, it's not that far. I think what I'm doing with food, with movies and also music, and the business together, I think as a whole, it has perfect synergy. I don't think that they're really unrelated. And that's how I do things. If I cannot pull resources from somewhere, somehow, to contribute into a new thing I do, then I, I really would reconsider to either do it or not. Because to start fresh at a, you know, at, at, at later age, later age, is maybe at a disadvantage. Um, but first of all, I, I, I found food to be a true passion. And then I also saw that it would be the next biggest thing uh, after communication and, and, and tech. Um, so I thought how I could, you know, kind of rejuvenate the whole, the whole entertainment business of mine and make it a, yeah, and make it a long lasting one, I guess. Was this interest in food something that was always there? I was always there, but um, I, I, I thought to make it a bit, more, a bit more serious. And at the time, I think mainland China was actually, it was really lacking a, a, a decent food or lifestyle show. Okay. Yeah. So we started uh, 2014, right? Yeah. And, um, and it's, we, we just finished the uh, fifth season this year. Yeah, I've been watching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the food topic, I'm sure you hear this a lot, and even uh, people who know me doing this have asked this as well, is that you've never worked in the kitchen. You, can you really cook? Like, obviously, I heard stories and I know that you put a lot of hard work and dedication and courage into, into being who you are today and achieving what you've done, but not everybody has seen that. So what goes through your mind when you hear criticism like this? And how do you deal with it? It's logically acceptable because first of all, we may think that because someone has not been doing something for really long, they can't be good at it, right? That's the logic. It's okay. It's okay, but that's almost like saying, let, let me put it this way. That's almost like saying, we as a human race, we've been using the landline telephone for centuries. Why don't we stick with it? That must be the best way. So dump all your iPhones, dump all your mobiles right now. Let's go back to the landline because we've been doing that for the longest time, right? That's like saying, we as a human race, we've been using the, uh, we've been driving gasoline automobiles for centuries. So has Elon Musk gone crazy to start Tesla, right? Why, why are there so many electronic cars out there now? 
because that must be the best way because we've been doing that for the longest time. I, I think if we are that narrow-minded, that really frightens me because we are in a new era. There are, there are perks and different texts now out there that allows us to pick up on information much more rapidly than it has been in a uh, traditional kitchen, I would say. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but the way I've heard is, you know, maybe the first apprentice cook would, would, would be peeling vegetables for maybe a year or two. But I have, I have my ways, or I am, I have saved up enough money to be peeling something much more in the first year. Yeah, I mean, like, we hear all these stories about, like, chefs training in Japan. Right, and, like, they're, right. Like, washing rice for, like, seven years before they can right. make sushi. So is that the best and only way? I don't think we, have, we can be that narrow-minded in, in thinking like that, right? Okay. Uh, of, of course, there has been a lot of hard work and, and, and time and effort put into it, but, yeah, I, I don't have to get, get into those. Yeah. yeah, but how do you stay focused on doing what you need to do? Do you have, like, a system? Do you have... A way to do things, or because um, obviously it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of learning involved. Like, do you? How do you stay organized? How do you stay focused? That's one thing I learned in the in the, in the kitchen is time management, because when you're trying to serve two dishes, it's easy. For two, it's easy. For four, it's okay. For eight, yeah, it's not bad. But when you're trying to do eight dishes for a table of ten. And they have all they, they all have to be hot when you serve, like in you know Chinese food. It's not that easy. And when you do one of the, one of my Michelin galas, when you're serving for a 700, they still have to be hot. And you got eight minutes of serving time for a 700 fine dining. It's very hard. But then you learn, you know, gradually, eventually, you learn how to how to um, how to time your, to pace yourselves. And, and then your, your organization. Like what I just uh, demonstrated on, the, on, on, on my phone. You know, I try to squeeze in all these little seconds and milliseconds in my life to, to, to gain a, that, just that much more. But I guess when there's a will, there's a way. I don't know your time schedules, but you figure that out for yourself. But there are these little gaps in life where you can just squeeze in a bit more, you know, here and there, knowledge, and then eventually that adds up. That adds up, yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing how you're able to balance so many things and do everything so well. And I'm a very, naturally, I'm a very badgua person. I'm a very, I, I'm very curious about everything, you know? I mean, I, I, I look up stuff just to, just to know, just to ask why, where, when, how. So, and when I start something, I don't like to stop until yeah. I actually get somewhere. You know, that's, uh, that's just a personality. Yeah, I've right? heard many stories as well about how, <laughs> really? how deep you go and really? how, mm. how kind of focused you are and how deep down you drill into yeah. everything that you try to learn. And I think that's something that's very admirable. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can be a pain in the ass in that aspect, yeah. Um, but like, like I said, you're a man of many hats. You're developing a chef career on the side. You have music, you have acting, all that together. Um, kind of bringing the conversation back to where it started with music, your last Cantonese album was in 2005. Really? <laughs> <laughs> One step closer. Yeah. Right. And then your last Mandarin album was 10 years ago, it was 2009. Oh. So, <laughs> I know that, I know you haven't stopped doing music, so you've done mu movie songs, you've done songs for your, for your show, and over the past 12 months, personally, I've seen you kind of do a little bit more. Um, started with uh, 2018 Six Hat, okay. that performance, right. you launched three singles this year, right. uh, you were a guest judge on The Voice, um, and now, just recently you had the RTHK performance. So is this foreshadowing something? Are we gonna see more music coming from you in 2019? Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't really plan this. I think I'm just going with the flow, really, uh, sometimes. But I think at, at different times, with different um, inspirations or, or, 
sometimes I, I, I feel that there are different advantages for different fields. You know how sometimes a stock market, you know, it's, it's doing better than the real estate. Sometimes, like music, it's doing better than film. And that's how I can kind of weasel around and do my thing because there's never one trend that's always at the top. That's actually true. If you really look at the market, something is always doing a bit better. And if the trend is like that and you can't kind of catch the wave, man, you're on top. Because like when we started the, the Chef Nick show, we are definitely the, the biggest food show in China. When we started in 2014, by, by the third season, we were doing over 300 million RMB. And now we're in the fifth season. But if you catch the wave, that's, that, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. So I think, you know, we, we are, we're doing very stable in, in Chef Nick. So I think now I have the time to kind of... Do more music. Do more music. So does that mean we'll see the album, an album this year? Or? I don't know if I'm working on a full album, but, um, but I don't really think if that really matters anymore in the, in, yeah. in the new market, right? But uh, yeah, but what uh, does I, I'm, I'm hoping for, I'm actually working on a concert, but yeah. there's, I that's don't know what, what. That's what we were going to ask. In, in Hong Kong, everybody is you know, starting a concert as if they have nothing else to do. <laughs> And still hard to buy tickets, so. <laughs> we need a bigger stadium. That's what we need. Yeah. Yeah. We need a bigger a new, platform. Bigger we need stadium. more creativity. Maybe that's why I, I, I couldn't book my, 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 my stadium schedule, because I've been dissing it the whole time. <laughs> well, time to get creative and think about something different, right? Um, back on the, the topic of Chungga Ho Seng Yam, The Voice. Um, a lot of people have said that this season was a lot better than previous seasons. I think so. Um, personally, I think you being on it injected kind of a different dynamic. It was, um, it was interesting to, to see how, you, how seriously you took it. Um, again, stories. Uh, I heard a story that maybe I want you to share with everyone okay. about the, the, the drumming performance. So I actually heard from Derek right. uh, how hard you prepared for it and how, that, yeah. how you kept on like... Well, preparation for, 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 for the uh, performance is, is, is a given. But actually, when you talk about the voice, what I would actually want to share is, I don't know how many people have watched the, uh, the, 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 the show, but you know how I got totally bashed when I started you know, hammering onto the, uh, the, the button at first in the first two episodes? Yeah. Because there are actually these two new perks they changed with the gameplay this year that uh, to start off with um, all the contestants there are about 150 contestants you know put into one room and they are watching a live feed of whatever is happening on stage the performance along with the judges uh, comments and and how they would choose their team that's one thing the second thing is each judge would have a six person quota uh, to, 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 to choose into you know, assembling their team. And if you do choose a seventh person, that person would have to battle out any of their chosen you know, the person from the, 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 the original team. So thinking like that, there are a few things I, I, I tried doing is, um, the first episode, if people who have seen, this, seen the show would see me just hearing the, the, the first two sentences and then I would be smashing onto the button. And then, you know, the reporters, the, the viewers who would say, he doesn't know jack about music, you know, go back to cooking. Yeah, how, <laughs> how, how, how could you choose someone from, from just listening for the first two words? What I found out was, I am very aware that for the past 10 years, like you said, my last album was maybe 10 years ago, I'm very aware that, you know, a lot of the younger kids, they don't see me as a singer, they don't see me as a mu musician. If I were to um, fight, for these contestants over with, you know, through, with the other, other judges, I would have a very big disadvantage. The only way I could plant some ideas into the 150 contestants that are watching the live feed is by hammering onto that, that button and solely turning around because therefore I have the floor. I have the, the, the power of speech 
because they didn't choose the person, I did. So actually, I'm trying to voice out and tell not the person on the stage, but the 150 in the room what I have done or what my views on music is so that they would feel more comfortable joining my team. But then, man, I got, I got totally bashed by the media, by everybody else. Yeah, can you stop, just stop, stop this guy, or he's, he's crazy, whatever. And th that's one thing I found that was really helping me out strategically. The second thing is uh, people are also bashing me for, I would choose a lot of in contestants because I was solely pressing onto the button. But what I was also doing is, I found out if you had to choose a seventh member, and if your whole team was equally matched, they were all, you know, six of them were, were equally as good, it's very hard for a newcomer to choose who they would like to battle. But if you have two that are, it's cruel to say this, but if you have two that is obviously a bit weaker, it's easier for the newcomer to choose from. So you could always keep on upgrading your team, if that makes sense to anybody. But, but strategically, I think I've uh, uh, <laughs> done something new in the show, yeah. So it seems like you took a very strategic approach on, on how, you, how you picked your team and how you... Yes, but at the end, I, I hope all of these elements would bring a better show. Yeah. Right. What, so how long was the filming of the, the entire process? It was, the shooting days was 29 days. Okay. But the whole process with all the rehearsaling and all the training was maybe three months. So <clears> over <throat> that span, like being on The Voice, and this, this is a relatively new experience for you. Yeah. Um, what do you think was the biggest thing that you learned or, or gained from that? Um, for me, it was a, a, a great platform to get back into music because it, it has the most reach right now in, in, in terms of a variety, variety shows in China, so. Okay. Yeah. Are you going back next year? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. But some stuff like that, like um, kind of music shows and stuff, are still something you'd like to Definitely. be more involved in. Definitely. Okay. Um, as I talked about at the beginning of the, the talk, you're the first guest we're having here at Talks at Google in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So I'd be remiss not to bring the conversation back to tech a little bit. All right. Um, I heard that you're a very heavy YouTube user. Um, so let's start from there. So <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, I, I, you yeah, told yeah, me sure, in the room. Sure, yeah. sure. So, um, What's your view on kind of technology and how we interact with, with platforms like YouTube and other social media? And, and how do you think that plays into today's world and even your own life and career? Well, definitely for, for me, it's a, it's a very important part of my life now, I think, uh, for, for any of us, really. We've just got, gotten into the habit of, you know, learning a lot. Even like my, my kids, they're always on YouTube, seriously. I think the tech nowadays, it has really enhanced the speed of our learning curve. Uh, we are picking up, you know, the goods and bads through the through in internet, like like even through food, like like uh, how tech has really changed food immensely through the the, the past ten years. Now the deli delivery system has allowed us to 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 choose, you know, fresh goods from the internet, uh, stuff like that. You're not a very heavy user on, on social I, I'm media. I'm not a, right, yeah. right. And I'm not a social media guy, but, but um, I, if, if there's a destination I'm looking for, then I would definitely you know, go, go, go on that. Do you feel that social media nowadays has kind of become something that's, that more or less kind of consumes people and it's become more of an addic addiction for some people and, and well, takes away from? kind of the benefits of technology. But then I think um, it's a balance between, you know, for everything that we do. Yeah. You're right. If we go too extreme, it's, it's always, you know, kind of harmful. Okay. So we just have to balance it out. Is that why you're not on it or you just don't like it? I'm just not in the habit of, you know, doing the... <laughs> <laughs> that, that maybe it's just, just not me, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's it's a I think it's also a platform for you to kind of share your views sure, and, and sure. share what you've done and 
and something like that. So sure, uh, maybe something to consider. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm sure if you opened up a YouTube channel and shared your cooking tips, right. people, everyone here would be right. Love but to then subscribe. That, that, that's another thing right now. That's really you know, I, it's a, there, there's a bit of a language barrier. You know, I mean, I have a lot of clips, but they're in Mandarin. Yeah. So if I do put it on YouTube, then I would have to kind of, you know, redo the exact same thing, but one maybe in English or in Cantonese. Cantonese. Well, that really pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> right? I have to do three of the same thing. I would have to kill three fish to, to do a steamed fish. Yeah, and if you only kill one fish, people will be commenting again Hello? and saying, the right? guy got, there's already a cut there. And right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, been meaning to ask you about a show that you did uh, called Celebrity Chef East vs. West. So you faced off against star chef David Rocco, um, and it was a five episodes miniseries, and spoiler alert, you won. Why did you choose to go film an English show? Uh, what was that experience like? Um, well, back to the part where you know, a lot of people have been doubting me for, for, for the cooking part. So all you could do really is just to go the extent to, to prove yourself. Uh, I think that in, I, I've been doing that in every field, really. Um, that's why I put myself through competitions, especially when you do a, um, a foreign show, like from, from Fox. Yeah. Then it's not a Chefnik show. Then it, it, if, if I can't prove myself through that kind of platform, then the haters will be haters. But at least I've gone the extent, you know. I, I might even be going back this year to do, to, 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 be judging or even competing. Okay. Um, I'm okay with competing. But yeah, I think you just have to find yourself to find, find ways to, to prove yourself. I have done many crazy stuff just to prove myself. But sometimes that's, you know, that's the extent you would have to do. I've jumped off buildings. I've jumped off convention center yeah. in Hong Kong. To, to do my movies. Police story. Right. Yeah. When people, people also thought that I, because I'm the son of, you know, two celebrities, maybe I don't take my job seriously. And that's, you know, that's why I've been putting myself through all this hardship and this pain in, 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 in buildings, after buildings. Because if that's not serious enough for you, then, then what is? Yeah. It may be silly to some people, but then you go try it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm sure, like, in the room, not everybody is familiar with, with how you started and everything, but definitely as someone who grew up in that generation, I was able to witness all the, all the negative... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, uh, right. it was the same generation. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I was, yeah. For people who, didn't, who, who doesn't know, the first four years of my career was 99% booing. I would not get any applause anywhere. The minute I stepped on stage, it was all booze and foul language and profanities. Four years. And that, it wasn't because of what you did, it was because oh, of sure. your background and sure, who you were. Sure. Yeah. And uh, it was really, really tough for four years. Every time I walked off stage, I would see my managers and my, 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 my team, they would be just, you know, they, they, would, they would be all holding their fist and, and just crying and, and I would be the only one that could walk back to the changing room and cool myself down. But that I, would, I would have to endure that for every day for four years. And you kept going. Because back then we had so much, you know, we had so much promotion to do, all the, uh, all the uh, performances. Back then it was work after work because there was no internet yet. So everything was live. Every day was live. Every time I, before I walked on stage, I would almost get paranoid about being booed. Because it got to an extent where I could not hear one word of the song I was singing. It, could, it was getting that nasty. Then somewhere in the um, year 2000, it turned around. What was the turning point? I don't know, man. You don't know? <laughs> maybe, maybe there was some new kid to pick on, but... <laughs> or maybe they just got tired of, you know, yeah. the, all, the, all the hating. Or maybe they saw... Or maybe there was enough buildings jumped. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But, but what but I you, mean is... You didn't jump the convention at, in 2000. Yeah. No, I didn't. No. I jumped it in a, a 2003 or somewhere, somewhere yeah. like that with, with uh, Mr. Jackie Chan. But, yeah, you know, when, when, when there is that need, you just have to find your way to excel. Maybe, you know, there are some crazy things that we, we got to do. Thank you for that. Um, any live questions? So during the first few years when things were really tough, um, did you ever doubt yourself and think that you just weren't good enough? And if you did, what kept you going? I did. Uh, but maybe for a very short time. I never doubted myself in terms of music. I never doubted myself in terms of all the hard work I was putting in. Um, I believe in... I think I'm a logical person. And I think anybody can accomplish anything if you work hard enough. Really, I don't think there was a time where I, I, I think I, I could have given up. I would just, I'm a person that does not give up. You know, naturally, I just have that kind of personality. And the second thing is, I, I can't give up because I had to make a living. You know, a lot of people with, would, would, would imagine that because I came from a family of two actors and actresses, an actress, that I don't take my, uh, my, my job seriously. But I've been self-sustained ever since my debut. At the age of 20, I've been paying my sister's education. So you know that's behind the story, behind the scenes stories, but but I, I I could not afford to give up my 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 job back then, so I took everything more seriously than anybody would have ever thought. I have a question online. Um, do you think so? You've been in like I said, fifty over fifty films. I didn't know that. Yeah, I looked that up. <laughs> um, What's your outlook on the genre of Gong Tan Pin? Do you think there's a future? What do you think that future looks like? Back to the creativity thing. I think we are, Hong Kong right now is, we, we are really lacking this part. I think we have been geniuses in the stock, stocks market. We were, we, we are, you know, excellent in the real estate market. But maybe that's the last generation, the past generations. To get by in this generation, we've got to be really creative in, in, in our own fields. Like in movies, when, when, if you're talking about the uh, movie industry, I think we've all had our fair shares of the uh, Marvel DC franchises, where right? we've, we've all seen our Supermans, our Batmans, our Iron Mans, our, our Hulks, our Flashes, our Wonder Womans, our, I can go on and on, and we have all seen them. The thing is, don't we have 5,000 years of history and culture? But yet, we are still shooting the Monkey King. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So I urge any of you guys out there, if you guys ever fantasize about, you know, our own superheroes, please jot down something write a paragraph or two, send them to me, or to <laughs> whoever you know, that you think can make something happen, because we have to. If we don't, we are gonna be really, really behind, really, really far. Send, send in your <laughs> movie ideas to, to, to me, Google. I'll pass them along. Yeah. <laughs> um, next live question. The question I want uh, to ask is, uh, can you share with us the failures, one of the failure story, or the moment you doubt yourself, is it a good decision to kick off this Chef Nick show? And then uh, if that uh, is yes, how you overcome, like how you self-motivate yourself, and then bring back your passion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, failures, wow. Many failures, really. Um, but I think in, in, in business, I would say one of the more obvious ones were, um, I invested in a company that did, did a post-production at the age of uh, 22, 23. That was 2003. I started a, a post-company, 
post-production company, and we would do computer graphics, we would do color grading, we would do editing, um, dubbing for a lot of commercials and uh, films, uh, stuff like that, right? So when you're in that kind of a hardware tech company, you buy a lot of stuff. You buy a lot of, um, we call telecines, uh, editors, and, and mics, and this and that. But back then, we were at the end of the analog trend. And all of a sudden, things changed. They don't use tapes anymore. They went from analog to digital. But all my hardware, they were a lot of, a lot of money. So all those, all of a sudden went into the can. And that's, you know, back to the well, where I was just saying, if you can't catch the trend, that's a different story. I didn't back then, and I, lo I lost a lot of money back then. You know, I had to you know, mortgage my, 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 my house and all that, but that was on me. You know, everything just changed. So, but do I still, be at that time, it was hard, but I still believed in the, uh, the network that I, that I had, had built, all the connections and the, the work we were doing and then at the end we were okay, but there were a few years that was really, really tough. But as long as, you have to, you have to stick with it. I mean, a lot of stuff I do, they, it doesn't reflect right away. Most of the stuff doesn't reflect right away. The Chef Next Show didn't reflect right away, but eventually, eventually, like, like how everybody would doubt me through my, uh, in, in my culinary journey. But then last month, or two months just, just, just now, I, I think maybe a lot of people had also had the Chef Nick McDonald burger. It was really good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. At that price, I think we did a great job. And uh, you know, actually, right after this meeting, I'm going into inventing, into the central kitchen to invent the 2019 one again. And we, we sold, within five weeks, just only in Hong Kong, we sold over two million burgers. And there is only, let me remind you, only six point somewhat million population in Hong Kong. So things I ate like know. five, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, I thank you. But, but then yes, it took five years to, you know, to kind of prove yourself. Just, you have, really have to stick with it. On the, just a quick question, also online, on the McDonald's collaboration. Right. Um, throughout the whole process, how many burgers did you have to eat? Man, I ate. <laughs> I ate a lot of burgers, <laughs> and there were there, there are we, 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 we ate a lot of burgers. We also tested a lot of the fries, a lot of the ice cream, a lot of drinks, and yeah, there were a lot of other crazy stuff that we tested. What's that creative process like working to to create a new menu item, or to do something that's never been done before, like the the pork chop? Right, that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so good. It's. That's part of being creative. I think uh, that's something that I, I really enjoy is creating menus or writing songs and making something my own. And, and when they gave me the, uh, the, the, the homework to, to, to start up something that has Hong Kong feng wei, yeah, Hong Kong feng wei, it, it actually, right, I didn't know how to translate that, that, that you know, taste of, taste taste of, of Hong Kong, right? <laughs> um, I was thinking how I could relate the, the taste of my childhood to a McDonald's burger. And there are other ideas that I'm still working on, on, on right now, uh, maybe later in the kitchen today. Stuff like, um, you know how Hong Kong people love their gale yu dan, right? right? I, would, I, would, I, would, I would think that it would probably work with a gale yu lao bao, right? Because that's almost the you know, same thing. <laughs> you know, it, but, Maybe a sade thing, or on gaxi hon, but there, right, exactly. But then you know, there there are there are ups and downs we have to 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 um, overcome. Like maybe if we do work on a curry dish, then the kids would be left out, right? So it, it's a long journey, but I really love it. These are some of the creative juices that I have to get out. I can't wait to see what you have in store. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for coming, and thank, thank you, you for being so honest with everything you're saying. I, I could just feel that you're, you're not scripted. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, James. Uh, 
with, uh, seems like you have a lot of wisdom, like, you know, you invested in a company back in when you were 22, um, even though it kind of went through rough times. So through all these times, um, do you look up to somebody? Is somebody your mentor that has always been since day one? Um, or that has evolved depending on which part of the industry that you're in? Uh, good question, actually. I, I, I don't have that person. I've always thought of my mentor as logic. I, I, I've really not gone to anybody about much of this kind of stuff. Maybe I should, right, <laughs> really. But, but I just don't have that person in life. Did he go home to you? Um, so, y y yes, in my company, yes. Hmm, that's actually interesting. I don't have that person. Right. Are, you, are you open to seeking mentorship? Like seeking help and asking for that, or, or no, 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 like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but what I'm saying is like a new department. <laughs> like, I know you help a lot of young people, um, but you're also like a young person yourself, right? right? So, like, when when you do same come generation. across, yeah, yeah, same generation. <laughs> when you do come across like difficult decisions and stuff. Like, do you just solely, you're comfortable relying on yourself and, and just thinking that through? That's something I'm actually really interested in because I'm facing similar kind of situations for my career. <laughs> I've always been able to, I've always been able to gradually work out the problems in my life. So yeah, I've really not, you know, found that person to, to, to go to. And then because of the different fields that I work on, you know, sometimes it's music, sometimes it's, uh, it's film, sometimes it's business, sometimes it's kind of a bit tech. So there's not really that one person I can talk to regarding all the uh, different fields. Believe it or not, some of us actually delayed or postponed our flight, so we can generate oh. your talk. Thank you, yeah. thank you. <laughs> some people and, actually uh, flew in. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, I'm curious to know that what, is your, what are the messages or expectation or the impact that you expect to bring through your music, your art, your entire passion to your audience? Through music, through movies, of course, mainly it's entertainment. And uh, music, I could say, I, I hope it you know, brings more... Uh, I, I hope my music could also stimulate or console you in your everyday day life. But, in terms of a deeper message, we're trying to do that through the Chef Deck show. Because as, like what, what I was saying about, you know, now we don't share correctly or, or how we are missing the essence of eating together. Um, I, I, I really, really learned a lot through the, 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 the kitchen. The time management stuff, the, uh, the sharing part, it has changed my personal, personality immensely. I was a really different person before I started cooking. And I think, especially in this day and age, um, we hope to promote a lot more activities or, or wilderness, wildlife activities, or stuff that you could do, you know, apart from just looking at the phone or the computer. I think that's a very, very important um, part of life. Uh, I got a question more about uh, your film career. So I just wanted to know, moving forward, so first of all, congratulations on the Best Actor Award. But moving forward for your future film projects, are you going to be pursuing more action-driven movies like a story? Or are you going to go for more uh, controversial or dramatic roles that are going to further challenge your acting abilities? I don't really have a preference. I think that I am... Um, Sometimes you need a bit of luck when you when you you know when you when you're giving a, a a script, the cast has got to be right, the story has to be right, the whole crew has to be right, the timing has to be right. We always say that in the movie industry, each movie has its own journey. Really, all you could do is do your best when it is handed to you. Um, but I do think there there is one that I'm planning on um, in a few months. It is action-packed. I do think Hong Kong has to find its roots some way, somehow. And to me, Hong Kong movie is about Hong Kong action. It has never really been about Hong Kong drama. So it's going to be tough. But I think, yes, I'm going to have to dig down and, and fight again.
and maybe jump off some buildings. <laughs> I think many of us are big fans of yours. Uh, Thank here you. In the room and on video, and uh, you started the talk with keywords today. So I was just wondering, reflecting back on your life path, um, what are some of the keywords that define your character, who you are today, um, that made you to lead a successful life, successful career, and maybe just share some words of wisdom with us. Thank you. Keywords would be creativity. Cre uh, keywords would be uh, would be tenacity. Keywords would be synergy, actually. Um, resourcefulness, but different keywords come at, at different, different times, yeah. really. And to me, if I was to be greedy, I would say every word is a keyword. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so before we wrap up, just one question from uh, somebody watching from the States, actually. Wow. So What time is it over there? <laughs> it is late. Yeah. <laughs> so. Basically, they said, um, at our headquarters, we have a program called Kitchen Sink. And there are um, chefs that come all the time to, to teach how to cook. And if you're ever in the area, would that be something you would be interested in cool. hosting? Cool. Yeah. cool. Hey, speaking of which, you know, I think um, tech-wise, right now I'm having problems with working on the VR goggle. Like, when you're teaching cooking, the problem is the depth. You know, you, you can't lean into the pot and see what's in there. If you guys crack that problem, please tell me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we, can, we can work together and see what we can do. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. my, my, my company, because I'm still the uh, Asia Pacific Marketing Director for the digital domain company, right, in, in LA, yeah. and we, we're still doing all the uh, post-production for uh, Avengers, for, for all those series. So if you guys ever come up with that kind of tech, yeah, tell me, please. Awesome. So that brings us to the end of our talks at Google. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Nick, for taking your precious time thank to you. share with us.